Okay, so we will go ahead and get started for today. So today we are talking about, is it poisonous? So can you guys think of anything that you know of that is poisonous? Poison ivy? Poison ivy. Anything else? What can you think of that could be poisonous? So we got poison ivy and that is a plant. But what else can be poisonous? Snakes. Snakes. So we got animals. Is there anything else that can be poisonous? What was that? Mushrooms. Mushrooms, yep. So like food. Mushrooms are some food that we eat. So we are going to explore all of that today. So first off, let's get into a short little PowerPoint I made with some poisonous uh, plants on it. So is it poisonous is what we are discussing today. So what makes plants poisonous? Do you guys know what makes a plant poisonous? If you don't, it's okay. So let's see. Poisonous plants are plants that produce toxins um, that deter herbivores from consuming them. What's a herbivore again? Do you guys remember? An animal that eats plants. An animal that eats plants, okay. Plant, so plants cannot move to escape their predators. So they keep, plants can't move to get rid of the animals that are going to eat them. So they must have some other means of protecting themselves from herbivorous animals. So many of these poisonous compounds also have important medical benefits. So oh, there are some plants that are poisonous um, and they're poisonous to keep uh, their predators away from getting them. So there are 12, I think there's only 11. I don't know why I said 12. Okay, there are 11 different poisonous plants that can be found in Nebraska. So we're gonna look at some pictures of some poisonous plants that we can find in our own state. So the first one, this is called arrowgrass. And arrowgrass can be found in wet meadows and marshes. So if you can think of anywhere that's wet or meadowy or anything like that, you there's a possibility you could find arrowgrass. And most of these are poisonous to a point where they like they give you a toxin that would just make you feel really sick. They're not like I mean if you would be around it a lot or would ingest it for some reason, it could be bad, but for the most part they just kind of make you nauseous and not feel so well. Okay? So another one this one over here, this is called um, death cat camas, and that is found, you can find it just about anywhere in the state, but it does not like being in sandy areas. So you won't normally find that in sandy areas. And it looks almost like a flower. So if it was me, I'd be tempted to smell it because I like flowers. So some of these can be a little tricky. And then we have this one, this is called Lambert crazy weed. So yet again, it almost looks like just a nice pretty flower, but it can be poisonous. Then we have dwarf milkweed. And yet again, it just looks like another pretty flower. Crazy to think that some of these pretty flowers are poisonous. And here are some more plants. So first off, we have the laxpers. And then these look just about the same as the laxpers. This is called the Nebraska lupine. And then this is called nightshades. And most of these are found um, just in, they can either be found all over the state or they're mostly in like the central and the west part of Nebraska. And then next we have the poison 
hemlock. And there's also a plant called water hemlock and they look pretty much the same. Um, they're both a hemlock plant and they are both uh, found all over the state of Nebraska. Then we have the riddle ground cell and that can be found in central and western parts of Nebraska. Then we have showy milkweed, which is also found all over Nebraska. And then this is a choke cherry, which actually you can eat a choke cherry, but you have to be careful of its seed. That's what makes it poisonous. Okay, so those were just some of the poison plants you can find uh, through the state of Nebraska. Um, and then somebody mentioned poison ivy. There is also a poison ivy plant. Um, do you guys know the rule for um, how to be able to tell if you see poison ivy? Have you ever heard that funny little rhyme that people tell you about poison ivy? Anybody? I remember growing up, my parents used to always say, um, leaves of three, let them be. So a poison ivy plant um, usually has a cluster of three leaves on a stem. And that is how you normally typically can tell that it is poison ivy. Um, and poison ivy leaves range from the colors of uh, green to red, even orange sometimes. So poison ivy, and there are some plants that look like poison ivy. So you just have to be extra careful when you're out walking, um, like hiking trails and stuff like that. And your best bet always for if you're like hiking or something is to make sure you're staying on the path and not going out into the woods because that's where you run more of the risk of running into these um, poisonous plants that are out and about for us. Okay, so we also mentioned that mushrooms can be poisonous. So I have, actually my aunt and uncle have it and I borrowed it from them, a nice little handy dandy guide for if you would go mushroom hunting and it just kind of, it's this nice guide and it tells you about all the mushrooms that are all over. And then next to the ones that are poisonous, it's got just this little marking to let you know, you know, it's not the safest um, mushroom to be around. Um, but so we're going to watch a little video to give us a little more information on mushrooms. So, let's get that up. Okay, let's just watch this little video on a little bit more about mushrooms. Tell us a little bit more about them. There we go. Okay. Tonight, we're just deciding what to have for lunch, and we were thinking pizza. You've probably heard of the topping that I want on mine, but it's a little out of the ordinary. I'll give you a hint. It has lots of vitamins and minerals, but it's not a plant, so it's not broccoli or peppers or olives, though I do love all those veggies. And it doesn't come from an animal, so it's not sausage or pepperoni, though I do like those too. Can you guess what I'm thinking of? I'm going to have the mushrooms. That's right, mushrooms aren't plants, and they aren't animals either. Mushrooms are a type of fungus. Fungi are a whole separate kind of living thing, not plants and not animals. Some of them look a lot like the mushrooms I'll be having on my pizza, but others are much weirder. There's black witch's butter, which is a type of fungus called a jelly fungus. I bet you can guess why. It looks a lot like dark, thick jelly. Then there's the brain mushroom, which looks a lot like, well, a brain. There are even mushrooms that glow in the dark. Fungi might seem like plants from the outside because many of them grow from the ground, but scientists have made some pretty cool discoveries about fungi that make them different from plants. For example, one thing that makes plants special is that they make their own food out of sunlight. That's how all plants eat, but fungi can't do that. Instead, they have to get their food from other living things, just like us animals. That's also why you might see mushrooms growing in dark places. They don't need the sunlight, while plants won't grow in the dark. Also, get this, when you look at fungus really close up, 
you can tell that they're actually made of some of the same stuff as animals, not plants. But remember, fungi aren't animals either. For one thing, even though fungi have to seek out their food since they can't make it themselves like plants do, they can't run or walk or even fly to get it like animals can. How do they get food? Well, fungi actually grow right on top of their food. Mushrooms, for example, eat dead plants, which is why they often grow on trees or the forest floor. As fungi get bigger, they're able to absorb or soak up more and more food. They're pretty special that way. When animals like you and me break down our food and turn it into energy, we do it inside our bodies. Our stomachs add special stomach juices to the food in our bodies to break it down more easily. Fungi digest food in a totally different way. They add stomach juices to their food too, but they spread it right on what they're eating. So the food gets broken down outside of their bodies, not on the inside. Then after the food is broken down, the fungi just soak up what's left over. I agree, fungi are pretty awesome, especially mushrooms. But even though a lot of mushrooms are good for you, like the ones on pizza, we definitely don't want to go picking mushrooms ourselves. That's because there are so many different types of mushrooms in the world, and some of them could make you really sick if you eat them. They can give people a stomach ache or make them feel like throwing up or much worse. And some of the mushrooms that are bad for you actually look a lot like mushrooms that are good for you. So we leave the mushroom growing to the experts and don't pick them ourselves. Now I think it's about time that we order some pizza. So that was just a nice little quick video to show you guys a little bit more about mushrooms. And if you've ever actually like gone looking for mushrooms or did any of that kind of stuff, like the video said, um, a lot of the mushrooms that are bad for you actually look like the mushrooms that can be good for you. So unless you're very, um, unless you've been picking mushrooms for a long time or you have like, like me, you have a little guide to know um, it's always just the safest bet to make sure you get them from a store, from somebody who knows what kind of mushrooms to pick. So, we've talked about some um, uh, poisonous plants now, and you guys, we've talked about those. Um, we've talked about how uh, mushrooms can be poisonous, and what did she say mushrooms were? What were they called again? They were a... See who's listening? Fungi. A fungi. They are a fungi. Now let's talk about some animals that are poisonous. So first thing first. Um, do you know why some animals are considered poisonous? Because they have to to defend predators. Yeah, most animals that are poisonous um, use it to defend from predators. Some of them even use their poison to get their prey so that they're able to um, eat them. Um, most animals that are venomous or poisonous or venomous or toxic, um, they, um, they produce special tish specialized tissues um, that have the venom in them, like, um, let's see, for snakes, where does their venom come out of? Do you guys know? Or their poison? Snakes, it comes out of their fang. They're, like, fangs, their teeth. And then if you're looking at, like, a wasp or a bee or that kind of stuff, they're not so much poisonous as they do have some venom, um, and some other stuff, they, it, that comes out of their stingers. So there are lots of animals throughout the world that are actually, um, venomous. Like, did you guys know that a puffer fish actually has toxic poisons for humans? So a cute little puffer fish is toxic. And then, um, let's see. See if I can find a picture of a And then could would you be able to believe? Let's see, I'll show you a picture quick. Hold on. Would you believe? 
that these cute little froggies here, they're poisonous. Crazy. It's just this cute little frog and it's poisonous. And do and how those frogs get um, their poison is actually by eating a little mites and stuff that actually have the toxins in them, which is surprising because don't you think that an animal that is poisonous, how do you think they protect themselves from poisoning them their own self if they're a poisonous animal? Do you guys know? Or any ideas as to how they're not infecting themselves? Most of them, it is because of, like I said, how of where the poison is kept. It's like kept in their teeth or their stingers and stuff like that. So they actually are able to not have the poison like actually within their bodies. So. I saw some of those blue frogs at the zoo once. Some of those frogs at the zoo? Yeah. Yeah, there are. I mean, if you've ever seen like rattlesnakes and stuff like that, they keep those at the zoo. And I mean, as long as the handlers that are handling those animals are careful, or I know um, there is a way for some animals to like get their the poison or the toxins that can um, hurt people. I know there's a way to like devenomize them. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I know some animals that is an option so that they don't have that if they're going to be in like a zoo type area and stuff like that but um i really don't have much more for you guys today on uh poisonous stuff um i know there's some other videos and stuff on the website you guys are, feel free to make sure you go check those out and there's also some other cool fun facts about those little frogs i showed you and their poison and all that stuff on um the uh website that we have going on it's got fun facts about all those and everything and then tomorrow we will be discussing hiking biking and climbing so it should be a some more fun topics to talk about and make sure it's a beautiful day out make sure you're getting out in nature enjoy the beautiful weather and enjoy all the wonderful nature that is outside for you guys. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.